Thanks, everybody. Uh, today, I want to take some time from you to talk about buy versus build. I think we are all aware that everyone in the financial industry needs to make this decision either way or the other. Do I want to build it on my own or do I buy it somewhere else? I think this holds true for every individual IT infrastructure topics that we have seen in the past as well. Um, and why is that even relevant when we're talking about especially the world of digital assets, crypto assets, security tokens? I think that's what we're all here today. That's why I wanted to focus also on this part. And I brought you to begin with the reason why um, people need to start thinking about it and already banks think about it, as we can see in the market already. If you have a quick look at the newest data that was published by KPMG and Aiden uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we can actually see who is actually holding already cryptocurrencies uh, and who was in the past an acquirer of cryptocurrencies. So on the left side, you can see for Germany, for example, we have 12% of the population that has actually investments that are holders of cryptocurrencies and overall 18% that have been acquirers of cryptocurrencies in the past uh, in the German market itself. So you see there is actually significant investors in the market that are interested in and that are actually looking for an offering also from their banks because where do you go? You go to a trusted party um, and then you go to your bank. Uh, that's the reason why uh, we are also in conversation with multiple institutes in Germany and the DAF region also in Europe. And on the right side, even more interesting for banks should be um, the usual crypto investor, um, what does its portfolio look like? So how much do you actually have in your portfolio as a mix? So you can see, hopefully you can see for Germany, 21% is the actual amount that they invest of their available money in cryptocurrencies. That only leaves 80% for the rest. So for savings, cash, for their retail investments, all of this. That's all the 80% that are relevant also for the bank because that's money to be made that's actually where they want to service the customer, but you're missing out of 20% of their investments. So you're missing out of 20% of potential revenues made by each individual customer. And that's something everybody should think about when thinking about, should I actually start investing in this? Should I build this product or not? Or should I buy this product? If we just look at the market again, really quickly, we are all well aware that halving is around the corner when we talk about the cryptocurrencies that we have seen the market take an uptake. We have seen the ETFs on Bitcoin. We are about to see most likely the ETF on, on Ethereum as well. So we have seen an uptake in the market already. We're talking about probably doubling the market size from uh, quarter last year to the second or first quarter this year. We are seeing also more and more uptake and we expect to see even more uptake after the halving happened um, from historical data and also from the investments because currently what we are seeing in the market is institutions are buying Bitcoin ETFs and also real cryptocurrencies. So we have institutional money flowing in the market. We have not yet seen the retail market return actually to the marketplaces. So there is still a lot of room. There's still a lot of gap that we will expect to come true um, in the rest of this year going into also next year. And for that reason, it's time to do. So it's time to actually Think about this, you should have thought about already in the process of having a strategy um, because the market is not sleeping, it's 24 seven, retail will come back. Um, there is actually demand. So you should also think about this and demand has changed. We are not only talking about Bitcoin and Ethereum anymore. If we just look at the pandas numbers and our ecosystem partners, who is actually trading, what are they trading? If you look at just Bitcoin and Ethereum, you will see you only cover 31% of the actual entire market right now. So you're missing out of 70% of potential revenues again, if you only offer a small amount of cryptos to your customers, for example. If you look at that, we even see the so-called shit coins that are actually traded heavily. So that are high percentages and the relevance to all the others. And for that reason, what we are telling our partners and what we also see, the amount of cryptos you offer will give you also more usability, more users coming to you because they are looking for this. They're demanding this. They're actually investing in this. We are all not aware if they are aware of what they're investing in. That's for sure. That's something we need to teach them. It's also an educational piece. Nonetheless, they want to invest in this. And so banks need to think about, okay, how much do I want to offer? Where can I offer? Where can I actually get the access to it? And for us, it took us the last 10 years to actually build this technology, get actually the access to all the exchanges get the variety of cryptos available for a bank institution to actually make all these steps. Um, I can't imagine 
this will take time, this will be a lot of resources. And that actually brings me to the question that is topic for today is buy versus build. And what should everyone think about when making this decision? And I think this little metrics here can really sum up the building blocks you need to go through in order to understand, should I go either or, or can I actually make a hybrid model? Um, and I will get to the hybrid model as well. So first of all, you need to think about the availability of skill. Do I even have the people in my corporation to actually do something like this, to actually build this? Do I have the tech knowledge? Do I have the developers? Can I actually get them at the market? Does a crypto developer really wants to work for a financial institution? It's tough to get. It's a lot of money to be paid to them in order to get them. On the other side, do I have the, ab um, the ability to innovate? Do I have the timeline? Do I have actually um, the risk levels? Can I get it through my organization when I go level through level and convince from compliance to regulatory, um, from an innovative product, from a business perspective, I think we're all aware it makes sense. You can make money with it, but from all the other aspects, do I'm actually aware that I can do this and then manage complexity. Um, if I build something on my own, I'm increasing complexity a lot because I need to operate it. I need to service it. I need to maintain it. It's not just building the exercises also then in the run. What am I actually doing with it? And this is something, and then it now comes to the lower brackets where we talk about standardization versus customization and self-built can't be standard itself for a bank. If they build it, it's always a customized setup and customization is always put together with the resources. So if my lead developer leaves the bank, goes somewhere else, who will take his spot? Who can actually work this infrastructure anymore? And this is where we start to see banks really think about why shouldn't I partner? Why shouldn't I work with somebody else who actually did all that, who actually has the capacity, has the resources, standardized the product to make it actually quick and available, bringing me to the time to market, because we've seen the uptake in the beginning. Those are market numbers that you have saw on there. The, the demand is there, the market is there, um, and building something like this on, on our own. We had um, also conversations with uh, the um, consultancies out there like KPMG, Ernst & Young, and all of them. The expectation is to get to a status quo of where we stand today. A bank will most likely need three to five years development time to get there. Now, imagine three to five years, put that into a budget that will leave you probably between five to 10 million euros as a budget to invest to actually get to the status quo where we are today. Now, think uh, you start today, three years from now, where do you believe the rest of the market stands? like us, ourselves, Bitpanda, or everybody else that is already in the market, they are developing, they're not stopping. So you are already behind, already have spent so much money. So time to market is of the essence and time to market is what drives currently the market itself because you want to participate. You don't want to be late to the party because you already have been late for the last two times, but I get it because regulation wasn't there. It was unregulated. It was a bit of a bubble idea beside that. But now we do have Mika. We know it's coming. We have regulated in Europe. We are the first time the front runners. So time to market is of the essence. And then we have the last one, but least part is stability. Because you have a one-shot opportunity in this. Because we are talking about money of the customer. And they are, that's all, every customer is the most allergic when it comes to their own money. So if it gets lost, wrong wallet address, we have seen it in the past and the guys who started in crypto early that these things happen. A regular retail customer of a bank does not want to see this. They don't want, if they want to sell, they want to sell. It needs to be available. There can't be any glitches, all these things. So you have a one-stop shop, uh, one shop, a one-shot opportunity here because in the end, if you miss this, the customer will leave you and you never come back because he says, um, they didn't, it didn't work. I will go somewhere where I can trust in. They have been in the market. So again, here, and that brings me to the hybrid model, what is the risk in finding a partner, doing it with a partner, see if the market demand of your customers is really there, if you can actually make that money. You build up that knowledge. You build the skill, you build the resources with the partner together because the partnership, you can learn from each other, innovate together, manage the complexity, have a standard product, and then you can still decide Okay, I want to take it over, I take it as a SaaS model, or I actually start building it on my own because I did learn enough about that product. But this is the step that we emphasize with our partners. We see 
that the players in the market right now are rather bridging the gap between where financial institutions are right now, where they should be. And then in the future, it's up to each and every one of them institutions to make a decision. Do I want to build it on my own? Because I feel like I, that's one of my biggest um, products where I want to put my foot into and be like, yeah, it's the one I want to grow into. Or do I actually partner because I say, hey, that's not my core business. It's just, I need to have it, but I don't need to operate it. Somebody else can struggle with all the regulatory compliance and everything like this. And that's where actually we come into play where we said, hey, that's where we see ourselves and that's what we bring to the table. And then I will just quickly walk you through why um, partners have chosen us as the buy part rather than the build part is because we're in the market for more than 10 years now. Um, we have more than 25 million retail customers in our ecosystem that do have access to these digital assets. Um, we have more than 700 employees, so we are not talking about a small company anymore. We are not a fintech anymore. Um, that's that's got to be sure, or a startup at least. Um, from these 700 employees, more than half of them are developers. So think about it. We have more than 300 developers working for us, working on the product, making it better. And I imagine a bank having one product with more than 300 developers. Don't see it yet. And then there also is a huge part of regulatory because... As you might know, Bitpanda itself claims, and we are the most regulated in, in Europe, but we have the most license and we only are compliant and regulatory license and work with the regulators hand in hand to actually offer these things. Um, and this brings me to the part where I said hybrid, because you can start using all our infrastructure, you can start using our licenses, you can start using all that we have, and then brick by brick decide that I want to do on my own, that I want to take from you. Um, I want to take all of your infrastructure, but I want to run it under my own license because me as a bank, I want to be in control of compliance, regulatory, but on the technical piece, please, you guys take care of these things because what we have learned, this one-stop shop is not what in financial institutions are really looking for. They want to have the ability to actually make their own choices, to make these building blocks, maybe do best of breed, put something else in, build something on their own, everything possible. In the end, you can start quickly because we're talking here from a go-to-market perspective, you are somewhere between three to six months from, yes, we want to do this, we sign a contract to, yes, the first uh, user goes live. And imagine this on the timeline of a bank, three to five months in development and go live. This is unachievable in all my years working in financial industries, having a project from actually a new product introducing go, go to market within three to five months, haven't seen this before. So that's our approach to the market. And that's why we have partners like the LBBW who are choosing to work with us because they see the opportunity, they want to seize these opportunities and they work with a partner to actually get it done quickly and have this time to market. And as I said, this all needs to be highly secured. We heard about this today multiple times, custody, where are the customer funds? We are talking here fully secured customer funds, cold, cold, no way to be hacked 100% in the ownership of the customer. So whatever happens to Bitpanda in the worst case scenario, the customer remains with his funds. We have, we have learned as an entire industry, but as a Bitpanda, we always went this road um, to be fully secured. And if something happens to us, the customer has full access. We are not FTX. So we make sure that the customer does have all his coins. So it is my wallet, my coin, even if it's with Bitpanda. And that holds true for the entire ecosystem. And that is what drives us to believe that buy is right now the better way than build, because you still can build if you want to, but buy is the thing. So that brings me to the end, right on time, hopefully. And uh, if you have questions, we are around here all day. Happy to talk to you guys. If you have any questions, remarks, happy to do so. Thank you so much.